And you have to understand that when you pull together so-called metadata, phone numbers, and you aggregate it, collect it over time, day in, day out, every record of every individual, it begins to paint a picture of an individual that's even more revealing in terms of day-to-day -day activities than content is. One real proof of concept as to how sensitive metadata is, is that the government believes it's so valuable in the fight against wrongdoing. Uh, and it is so valuable to the government precisely because it is so sensitive uh, and so invasive. That was a preview of the NSA update that will be featured on our investigative series for the record. That is going to be airing next week on August 22nd. Kurt Wiebe, who was featured in that preview, who has been a good friend to the blaze in all of our investigation of the story, he was a senior analyst at the NSA who blew the whistle regarding the NSA's invasion of privacy. You may remember him from our first broadcast a couple of months ago, and he joins me now on the show. Kurt, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Lori, it's great to be with you. Great to have you here. You know, there are a lot of leaders in Washington who say without the programs the NSA is using, and specifically something we get into in our story next week, that the nation would not be safe, that law enforcement needs these massive collection programs to protect the nation from terrorism. How do you respond to that? That's an excellent question. I wish more people would ask it. Um, you know, the NSA needs to function. We need a good NSA. We need a healthy NSA. But we need a legal NSA under our form of government. Um, so yes, we, we need data. We need to exploit it properly for our national needs. But we need to do it in a legal way that comports with the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. And we can do it that way. What is it going to take to do it that way, the legal way? And it's funny that you even use, use the word legal because you think, oh, wait a minute, it's the NSA, the government. Of course it's legal. <laughs> well, yes, I, I, I understand that. It's, a, it's an interesting contrast. But the fact of the matter is we have a constitution. And if, if we're going to be a nation of laws, we need to observe it so that we all have a common understanding and a common basis from which to... Uh, create capabilities to keep the country safe. Mm. Um, and so when I say uh, to do it legally, I'm talking about we need to safeguard the identity of all those people who are innocent people, uh, not only in the nation, but the world. There's absolutely no reason to have their identities available in a database um, without protections. There's no need to do that. Understood. I think there are a lot of people out there who would agree with you and who do agree with you. You know, since our initial story ran a few months ago, a man named Edward Snowden has come into the national dialogue. What do you consider him? Is he a criminal? Is he a whistleblower? Is he both? Um, Edward Snowden is caught in limbo, if you will, in between what should be a process by which whistleblowers from within the intelligence community I'm talking about here. You see, general government employees have uh, whistleblower protections under the Whistleblower Protection Act. Right. But uh, specifically, in t members of the intelligence uh, organizations are excluded from that uh, right. So they have no official path. So when people in Washington say they should use or Snowden should have used the uh, accepted paths and so forth, there are none. I mean, there is one for the DOD, so if you're at NSA, you can go to the DOD Inspector General, which we did, and by the way, which um, didn't accomplish anything in terms of improving the system. Mm. Um, so so uh, Congress is another route, but Congress can say, no, I don't want to get involved, like they told us. So, you know, we don't have a good formal process for whistleblowers within the intelligence community. When we first met you in the very first For the Record, which was earlier in the spring, we learned about you and the four other whistleblowers who were involved in this. And all of you were raided by the FBI. You had personal items taken. You had data taken. Do you think that Snowden decided that he just didn't want to go through what you all did? And, you know, in your opinion, what should he have done? Well, uh, Snowden, and, and to answer honestly, your first question was, what do I think of him? I think he provided a valuable service to the American people by revealing 
law breaking on the part of our government um, which subverts the Constitution. Um, I frankly do not believe the legal case that they've made under Maryland versus Smith from 1979 as indicative of anything like the kind of metadata that's available and used by American citizens on a daily basis in multi-fora. So it's a whole different ball game, and we do need the courts to rule. Can you tell our audience what metadata is? You hear this word and you think, okay, what exactly <laughs> does that mean? We get into it in the show next week, but would you tell our audience what it is? Absolutely. Very simply speaking, let's take, for example, a piece of content, a picture of your family dog. You have the picture itself, and it's some kilobytes or megabytes big, and the cameras today do produce very nice fat files. Um, and you decide to name it. And you say, this is Rufus, the family dog taken on August the uh, 15th of uh, 2013. The, the metadata is the title of the picture. And information about the picture. How many megabytes is it? What is the size? What was the date it was taken? As you know, you can get this information uh, the cameras provide this information along with the files. So you have documentation mm -hmm. about the, the, uh, the who, that you supply that, and then the what, the camera supplies, along with the when. Thank you for that great mm -hmm. explanation because it's something that we talked about bumping into this segment, something we're going to talk about next week. Sure. How do you feel that President Obama has handled the situation so far? Um, Tentatively, uh, I, I, I get the feeling that no one quite knows where he, where he actually sits on this matter. Um, he's gone along with all of this uh, on, on his watch. At the same time, he talks about a need for a debate. Well, the debate is coming because of what Snowden did. And again, I think he provided a great public service for bringing this debate to bear Would at this particular moment. Would, Kirk, would there have been the debate without Edward Snowden? No, there would not. Um, there's a great tendency for leadership in government, and I'm talking Congress as well, to take a pill <coughs> Excuse me. and act, act together as a group. It's almost a group think. Uh, they, uh, Ambassador Bolton will get on the Fox network, for example, and say, oh, we absolutely need these programs. Well, the debate isn't that we need Programs. We do need programs, but I'm not sure we need these programs as they currently exist the way the NSA has implemented them. I think there are improvements that can be made to what NSA is doing, not just talking about privacy, mm. but also in discovering uh, intelligence from the masses of data out there. And that was an important distinction that you just made. You know, this issue has created some very strange alliances. I mean, our crew has met with the ACLU a number of times on this topic. Yes. Um, the ACLU is clearly uh, very concerned, uh, as we all are, yeah. about the invasion of privacy. So we've actually tried to work with the ACLU from time to time when they've wanted our, our technical expertise. You know, earlier I mentioned that some of your personal belongings had been taken from you. I'm sure our audience will want to know if you got your personal items back. <laughs> That's an, it, it, the timing's beautiful because we are literally, after, we, we filed, just a little background, we filed a return of property lawsuit against NSA, the Department of Justice, and the FBI uh, in 2012. Um, actually, November of 2011, I'm sorry. Um, just now, the, the government has begun to return our data. Not all the data. There, it, it, it has the right to keep what it thinks is, quote, sensitive. We would say embarrassing information, embarrassing to the government. Uh, so we are probably going to get it back, all of our data, less anything uh, that's incriminating as far as the government's concerned. Well, please keep us posted on that. Uh, Kirk. Weeby, you've been such a great source for us here at The Blaze. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. And you can check it out more when For the Record airs next Thursday, August 22nd.